with the password reset OTP requested and sent to the user, let's see how we can verify and update the password. To start this, we need the new route in the forgot password domain. So in the routes file, we create a post route for the reset path. This will take an async route handler which will receive the request and response parameters. Now from the body of the request, we expect to receive the email, OTP, and the new user password. So we destructure them. Now we we'll check to see if any of them are empty. If that's true, we throw an error with the message. Now to reset the password, let's create a function in the controller file. This will be a simple async function and we expect to receive an object of the email, OTP, and the new password. The first thing we'll do is to verify the received OTP. For this, we import the verify OTP function from the OTP domain. Now we'll check the validity by passing the email and the OTP to the function. If the OTP is not valid, we throw an error with an appropriate message. If that's not the case, we proceed to update the user record in the new password. To start this process, we do some validation. Here, we check to see if the password has 8 characters or more. Otherwise, we throw an error with a message. You can add any other validations you want to perform here. Once the value passes the validation, we want to hash the password to be stored. For this, we import the hash data utility function. Now we hash the password by passing the value to the function. We then update the user record based on the email and set the password to the new hashed value. At this point, we don't need the OTP data anymore, so we can delete it. For this, we import the delete OTP function from the OTP domain. Now we delete the OTP by passing the email. After this, we can return. Now if any error occurs, we throw it. And at the bottom, we add a function to the export. With that done, we head back to the route file. Here we import the new function we created from the controller. Now we call the function after the verification and pass the email, OTP and new password. After this, we respond to a successful request by passing the email and indicating that the password has been reset. In case an error occurred, we respond with an error status and pass the received message. With the router exported already, we are done here. Now with the server running in the background, let's perform a series of tests in Postman to ensure that everything works fine. First, let's create a push request for login. So we supply the login endpoint and set the body of the request to JSON. We then pass the email and password for the account that we used to request for a password reset in the previous part. If all is well, this should log in successfully. Now let's create another push request for resetting the password. Here we pass the endpoints for the route we just created. We then set the body of the request to JSON and supply the email and the password reset OTP that was sent to us. Also, we pass a new password for the account. Now we can submit and if all is well, we should receive the email and an indication that the password was reset. With that done, Let's try logging in again with the old details. If all is well, this should fill with a message. However, if we update the password value to the new one, it should go through successfully and assign a new token to us. This works fine so we can save and commit all the changes in our code. At this point, it's safe to say that we have covered all the basic features of a Node.js authentication system. This can be used with any front-end project to set up a working authentication system. Link to the full source code will be in the description.